Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel and of course the Gentile nations. Today we're going to deal with a topic called Cake Not Turned. Uh, this is to prove that Hosea 7 8 is not talking about skin colour. Now there's a doctrine going around, has been going around for the longest time uh, around Israelite circles that it's talking about skin colour, meaning um, it's symbolic of it being black on the inside and light on the outside, meaning it's Negro on the inside, but on the outside it looks like the nations. Yeah. So the the whole point of what I'm doing is that I'm going to prove that it's not actually talking about that. OK. And furthermore, um, Israel is determined by the seed of the father, as in is in the book of Numbers and is in Christ's genealogy in Matthew 1. So whatever your father is, is who is what you are. Yeah. So if your father is an Israelite, you know, but your mum is represents the nations, then you are an Israelite. Basically by the seed of your father. OK, but. However, we're going to deal with Hosea 7 and we're going to deal with Hosea 8. So let's now deal with Hosea 7. So we're going to deal with the whole of Hosea and we're going to go to precepts here and there. And we're not going to we're going to try not to keep it too long. OK. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood and the thief cometh in and the troop of robbers spoil it without. Right. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. They all are adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who sees it from raising after he had kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. For they have made ready their heart like an oven while they lie in wait, their baker sleeping all the night. In the morning, it burnt a flame it fire. OK, so let's go over what we've just read. When I ha when I would have healed Israel, that's the most high speaking, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samara. Samara is just the capital of the northern kingdom. For they commit falsehood and the thief cometh in and the troop of robbers spoil it without. OK, so that is talking about strangers coming in. OK, and they consider it not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who sees it from raisin after he had kneaded the dough until it be leavened. So he's now associating um, Ephraim committing, adu committing adultery with the strangers. Right. So that would most likely be idolatry with the strangers that were coming in, that were allowed to come in. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. Wine normally means a doctrine, okay? He stretched out his hand with scorners, but they have made ready their heart like an oven. So the heart represents their, an oven. While they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night. The baker represents the shepherd, in the morning, it burned a flaming fire. So the shepherd wasn't really looking after the wasn't really looking after Ephraim. That's what those scriptures are saying. They are all hot as an oven and have devoured their, their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that call it unto me. Right. So the kings are completely gone. All right. There's no more kings anymore. You know, they're, they're off their trolley. And the shepherd is fast asleep. He's not even looking after the oven. OK, there's none among them that call it unto me. So nobody calls out to the most high anymore. They've turned their back. They've turned from the most high. Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cape not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength 
and he know it not. Ye grey hairs are here and there upon him, yet he know it not. So basically, strangers have come in and have turned the heart of Ephraim. Okay, so Ephraim was committing sin with the strangers that have come in, and there have been nobody. The king hasn't been looking over the the flock. You know, he hasn't really. The king has been pretty much useless, and the, the shepherd has been useless too. There's not been any shepherds. So the Lord is now saying. Strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Ye grey hairs are here, there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. So basically he has now become spoilt. Okay, he's now become, his strength now is gone. He's now spoilt. And the pride of Israel, 10, and the pride of Israel testify it to his face. They do not return to the Lord, their God, nor seek him for all this. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart, right? So now the Lord is referring now back to his heart, being the oven, right? So Ephraim also is like a steely dove without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. So they call to Egypt. Now Egypt there means bondage, right? Slavery. And they go to Assyria. So they went to Assyria now. So they've gone back in bondage, right? As, as in Egypt. That's what that scripture is saying. Let's carry on. 12. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation heart heard woe unto them for they have fled from me destruction unto them so woe normally means destruction because they have transgressed against me thou i have redeemed them yet they have spoken lies against me and they have not cried unto me with their heart when they howled upon their beds they assemble themselves for corn and wine and they rebel against me okay so they don't so Ephraim is not paying much, not giving much attention to the Most High, not obeying the law and is allowing strangers to come in and they're now falling for the strangers is gods. OK, though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. Mischief is in reference to sin. They return, but not to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. So now the Lord is referring to bondage. So he's going to give them, he's going to put them back in bondage because of their behavior. Because they turned and they did not turn back. Right. They they returned. They return, but not to the most high. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the range of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. So the Lord is saying because they didn't, didn't really turn back. They turned from the Lord, but they didn't turn back. So in other words, they weren't flipped over. <laughs> you see, so they have become spoilt. OK, so let's continue. So, so far, so good. We haven't heard anything about skin color. What we've heard is sin, mischief, following other gods, following strangers, not having anyone there to lead them in the right direction. The king is useless and there is no shepherd. So that's what that those verses are talking about. It's not talking about skin color. So let's now go on to Hosea 8. So let's carry on because Hosea pretty much explains if that wasn't clear enough, it now explains Hosea 7. OK, <clears throat> so let's carry on. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, my God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver, of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, and they may be cut off. So it's idolatry that was causing all of this problem. Thy calf also, o Samaria, cast thee off. My anger is kindled against them. How long will it be? Ere they attend to innocency, for from Israel was it also the workman made it. Therefore, it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. So there was there was a calf in Samaria that was causing a lot of problems with the Most High. For they have sworn this the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. 
and bud shall yield no meal. If so be it yield, the stranger shall shallow it up. Swallow it up, sorry. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. So, so Israel, which is a northern kingdom, Ephraim, is the Lord is saying they shall now be among the Gentiles. So he's now putting them out. <laughs> For they are gone to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself, Ephraim hired lovers. So the Lord is now making mockery now of, of Ephraim and their wickedness. Ye though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Let's just hear that again. And ye though they have hired among the nations, now I will gather them and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Because Ephraim had made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin. OK, so that's idolatry. I have written to him and great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. So it was always about sin. OK, they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings and eat it. But the Lord accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity, meaning sin, and visit their sins? They shall re return to Egypt, means bondage. They shall return back to slavery. Okay, for Israel had for forgotten his Maker and builded temples, and Judah had multiplied fences, cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the the palaces thereof. Right. So that pretty much. It buttresses the point of Hosea 7. So it's not about skin colour. It was always about sin. Because it tells you in Hosea eight eleven, It tells you because Ephraim had made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. I have written to him the great things of my law. But they were counted as strange thing. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings and eat it. But the Lord accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins? They shall return to Egypt, meaning return to bondage. OK, so if you go to Exodus, I think it is 20. I think it's 21 actually or two. It tells you that um, Egypt just means bondage. Yeah, it means slavery, going back to slavery. So it's not about skin color. OK, now let's have a little bit of fun. So let's go to because it says that the cake was not turned. Right. And they're saying because the cake was not turned, it's symbolic. What it really means is that you're black on the inside and you're white on the outside. Right. In other words, the Negroes mixed with the nations and they became they look like something else on the outside but inside they're really negroes now that is a false doctrine that's a lie right straight up it's a lie okay so we're gonna go to let's first go to stay in psalms and let's go to psalm 78 so we'll, we'll read from 70 we'll read from 57 but turned back and dealt on unfaithfully like their fathers, they were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel. Right. So they're talking about the northern kingdom. Yeah. So that he forsook the tabernacle, the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men. And he delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over also unto the sword and was wrath with his inheritance. So he was very mean. He was very well. Yes, he, he was very. Uh, what's the word? He was very strong. He was very firm with his people. OK, so he was very firm with his people. So that's what that scripture is saying. But the important thing to take from that is that the Lord turned them aside <laughs> like a deceitful bow. So they didn't turn back to him and he turned them aside. OK, so let's now go stay in Psalms and we go to 80 and we're going to read three and seven. 
which is turn so let's read from two before Ephraim and Benjamin and Benjamin and Manasseh stared up their strength and come and save us turn us again O God and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved O Lord God of hosts how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people thou feedest them with the bread of tears and giveth them tears to drink in great measure thou makest us strife unto our neighbours and our enemies laugh among themselves turn us again O God of hosts and cause thy face to shine we shall be saved right I think this is a this is a call to the most high okay so let's read from the beginning give air O shepherd of Israel thou that leadest Joseph like a flock thou that dwellest between the cherubims shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength and come and save us turn us again so it basically is not just the northern kingdom but it's also the southern kingdom as well so they're pushing up prayers saying turn us again O God and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved O Lord God of hosts how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people thou feedest them with the bread of tears we are very very sad that's what it means and give us them tears to drink in great measure thou makest us strife into our neighbours and our enemies laugh among themselves turn us again O God of hosts and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved so what that prayer is saying is that they never turned back but they now cannot turn back because the Lord put them out you see because <laughs> it really was Ephraim started it but Judah was doing it as well right they can kind of got as bad as Ephraim right so what this scripture is is proving is that they all were doing it right <laughs> and they were never turned back and the Lord never turned them back because the Lord instead of turning them back he turned them aside and allowed the heathen to take them into Egypt meaning bondage okay so now let's go let's prove the point that it was all the tribes so we are going to go to Malachi 2 and we'll probably read around 11 to 13 Judah heart dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah heart profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and heart married the daughter of a strange God the Lord will cut off the man that do it this the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of David of, of Jacob and him that offer it an offering unto the Lord of hosts and this have ye done again covering the altar of the Lord with tears and weeping and with crying out insomuch that he regarded not the offering anymore or receive it with good will at your hand now important thing to take from that is 11 it said Judah had dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah had profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and had married the daughter of a strange God the Lord will cut off the man that doeth this the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of, of Jacob and him that offered an offering unto the Lord of hosts so the central thing to take from that that Judah was doing what Ephraim was doing was was, was as bad as Ephraim right but Ephraim was punished because they took it to the next level initially and therefore the Lord was dealing with Ephraim and he cast them aside okay now afterwards after the Assyrian captivity you had the Babylonian captivity and that's when the Lord allowed uh, the Babylonians to enter Jerusalem okay so Judah went into captivity as well so let's now go to 1 Corinthians 12 2 ye know that ye were gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led away right now this is talking about um ephraim as in yes it, it was, it's 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 talking about ephraim that was taken away into idolatry you know that ye were gentiles so ephraim was known as gentiles in compared to Judah the house of Judah which were known as the Jews right carried away 
unto the dumb idols even as ye were led so Ephraim was heavy into idolatry and that's why they ended up in captivity with Assyria okay and they continued to be in idolatry right up until Christ came and that's why Christ had to send out the apostles and then when he died he sent out the apostles to deliver his testimony to the house of Judah and the house of Israel so that so that Judah and the house of Israel can be grafted back in right so the non-believers of Judah and for the whole house of Ephraim to be grafted back in right so now let's explain that a little bit by going to let's go to Acts 21 21 and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise their children neither to walk after the customs right so Paul was sent out he was speaking to the Jews meaning the house of Judah those that were scattered and then he turned from them to Ephraim right to graft Ephraim in to the fold right because their branches were broken off too right so he was so it's saying that he teaches the Jews which were among the Gentiles to forsake Moses so basically to forsake the old law saying that they ought to serve ought not to circumcise their children neither to walk after the custom so circumcision in the flesh was no longer valid anymore in the new covenant right but the important thing to take from that is that is that paul was dealing with judah which were among the gentiles meaning ephraim right so let's go to zechariah 13 7 awake or sword against my shepherd and against the man that is fellow said the lord of hosts smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered i will turn my hand upon the little ones okay so let's go to zechariah 12 7 the lord also shall save the tents of judah first the glory of the house of david and the glory of the inhabitants of jerusalem do not magnify themselves against judah so it was it was always judah first and then Ephraim right so um, that was the order the order was to teach the Jews first and then afterwards you would speak to the Gentiles meaning Ephraim right in a jet because they were in a Gentile state of mind okay so that buttresses the scripture in Acts that we just read so now let's go to let's now go to second kings 17 right so both tribes were eventually taken out into captivity and they ended out they, they they kind of ended up in the wilderness okay because of sin just so ephraim started it in assyria when they went into the syrian captivity the lord cast them aside and then judah eventually went into captivity as well and eventually judah ended up in the same situation as Ephraim so we're now going to deal with um, what actually happened right so we're going to deal with just a couple of verses so 17 5 to 8 then the king of Assyria came up throughout all of the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years in the ninth year of Hosea the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and Haba by the river of Gozan in the cities of Medes for so it was that the children of Israel have sinned since the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had fared other gods, and walked into the statues of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the king of Israel, which they had made. Let's continue. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities from the Tower of the Watchmen to the Fence City. And they set themselves up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burned incest in all the high places. So did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and brought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols whereof the Lord has said unto them, ye shall not do this 
thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by the seers, saying, Turn ye from your wicked ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded you fathers and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear and harden their necks like to the neck of their fathers, and they did not believe in the Lord their God. Okay, so that kind of is a good summary of everything that we've just read, right? So the cake not turned was not about skin color, it was always about sin. And pretty much Hosea 7 8 is proved throughout the whole chapter of Hosea 7 and Hosea 8. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's proved completely by just reading the, the two chapters, right? It was never about skin color, it was always about sin. It was idolatry, is about disobedience. It was about the Lord wanted his wife to uh, to forsake following other gods, committing adultery and adultery, adultery, adultery. And basically it was not happening and therefore they did not turn back to the Lord. Right. They got turned and they did not turn back to the Lord. Right. And the Lord cast them aside. He turned them aside. So that is basically the end of that so that proves <laughs> that that scripture that these camps bandy about saying that he, to prove that hispanics are israelites saying they are negroes on the inside black on the inside but they are uh, the nations on the outside is a false doctrine because the bible is very clear that jacob shall not wax pale Brothers and sisters, we are called to live in peace with all mankind. Shalom.